what is up welcome um let me make sure audio is good it looks like it's good um what's up welcome welcome uh let me just move my chat pop out sweet what's up welcome everybody um thank you so much for tuning in for those of you live and thank you to those who are watching this video after the fact uh, appreciate it good evening party people yes good evening indeed i meant to do this yesterday but there just wasn't a time that i was available so apologies for that but um i have a new job so that's kind of what's taking up a lot of my time i'm not working from home anymore at least not most of the time so I'm still kind of getting adjusted to that change, uh, but it's good. It's really good. I'm very, very happy. So, uh, but today, so I will be at NXL Texas, uh, Lone Star, but as always, I'm like cooped up in a shipping container <laughs> doing telestration. So usually the time that I am available, if anybody wants to come say hi, is any time during lunch breaks. So I try to make it a point, no matter what, to... Um, to go just walk the venue around lunchtime either either to actually get lunch um or to just kind of walk around and see the venue because i don't really get to otherwise so if you do want to come say hi um or ask me a question or whatever uh that's usually the time that i'm most available so it's just otherwise it's constant so <laughs> uh but uh today we are going to talk about the lone star state the lone star major and i think what we're going to try to do after we do the traditional um layout breakdown is we might try to look at this in the paintballs paintballers by major league paintball uh like tool um on steam so we might try to walk the field virtually that way and shoot paint and such i haven't used it before so i don't know how good it is if it can show bounce shots or whatever so that'll kind of be an, an experiment towards the end of this but um we're gonna walk the layout like we normally do and this is probably going to be a pretty quick layout review just because it's fairly straightforward, which is awesome. So my initial reaction to this layout is I'm excited. I, it feels like this year they're really doing a good job. I, I guess I shouldn't say <laughs> I didn't like Vegas as much, but in, uh, in all of the layouts that I've kind of walked and seen this year, I'm really happy with it. Like WCPPL's layout was really fun to watch. And so this is another one that I wish I was playing, but I'm not. So as always, we are going to walk the baseline and see what the gaps are. Um, so right off the break, obviously this gap from the home towards the snake side is a very, very solid gap. Um, and you can see a bit further out if somebody were to run standing tall, you could shoot them, but it looks like that's the corner. So you likely, if you're tall enough, you could drop some paint in down in this little valley here in the wedge and probably shoot somebody as they're trying to slide in. But I don't know, you'd kind of have to be pretty tall to do that. So. It does show bounces. No idea if the actual physics of bounces are correct, but balls do bounce in that in the paintballers. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll take a look at it. Um, what's up, baby shady? <laughs> so, all right, this first gap, definitely something to be worried about. Um, it does appear, I guess it's possible that you get shot at by somebody on this outside gap towards you. Um, so if somebody were to run up this straight, like run up this direction, this outside gap is one that you would need to worry about. I'm not sure how much of a worry that is. I guess if you... I guess now that I say that, you actually could literally just off the break wrap this spot and shoot this, which gives you kind of the difference there is it gives you a little bit more of a window to shoot the person. Um, and you could double it up too. So if you were to double the home, this guy could wrap and shoot towards that Aztec and the guy on the outside could do the same. But obviously you open yourself up to anybody playing the tower shooting towards the home. So just be aware of that. Um, but as we continue outward here, it looks like as soon as you cross this gap, you have a lot of room to play. So, I mean, obviously your heads up guy shooting paint and shoes are concerned, but like I usually kind of weigh that a little bit differently because that guy's also on the move. So you do have a lot of options here. So if you, if you were to come out here and either, you know, tiger the guy that was the number two in front of you, or you were able to put him in, you actually have a really solid, uh, center route that you could get low and dive into. And then you could either, su either surprise your opponent by coming in low and shooting him here, depending on how tall you are, right? If you wanted to come up taller, you could surprise and kill him there. Or you could just actually probably ignore him if he's still playing on the outside of that tall tower 
and actually go up in, into the middle. This is again off the break, right? We're still focused on the first five seconds of the breakout. Anytime we do this uh, baseline walk. Um, but if we keep going out, um, really, I think the biggest concern to coming coming out to the corner. So like I said, there is this there is this shot from the home, which I'm sure is there. You know, that paint will definitely drop in at you. It's it's a pretty tight shot, admittedly. But I do think that that paint is a little bit scarier if this person comes out to this blind right here and uses this Aztec to blind out the back center. And then, so you'd have to go pretty far. You'd have to come out far like this, and then you have to be dumping your paint right here. So you're both on the move. They, they have a little bit of a head start just because they're kind of full sprinting to that corner bunker. Um, so depending on how quickly you can get here, you might be able to hit them. But again, by the time the paint travels there, depending on how fast they are, they might be dodging that paint anyway. So if that's the case, then it looks like it looks like this first gap is really your biggest concern. As long as you I think as long as you pass this Aztec, you're probably pretty safe. Are you safe enough to get into the snake? Um, this is where I think the home definitely can shoot you. Yeah, I, I don't think you're safe. Uh, so I guess along the baseline, you're you're a little safe just because I think the paint would be kind of hard to line up. It could be the case that at your actual field or at the tournament, this is a much bigger gap. But to me, it feels like that paint would be kind of hard to drop in. But we'll find out, I guess, uh, when we look at the paint pillars uh, thing. So, but this this inside route towards the the snake off the break is definitely exposed to the home. Super, super exposed to the home. And again, anybody that would be playing this dead zone. Um, and in fact, they could even play in this gap right here too. This is something else you have to watch out for when you're watching breakouts and stuff. It's just to see if somebody from the from the get-go stops here and puts paint in any of these two two spots. So that's always a possibility. There's a lot of you know, there's a lot of uh, mind games you can play if that's the case that somebody's doing that. But we'll talk about that in a minute. And then if we get to the corner, this is not a true tape, at least as far as the corner is concerned. Otherwise, it is. So. Uh, it's kind of like one of those where if you're not in the snake, they can keep kind of they can keep going. But we'll take a look to see if there's any uh, any positions on the field that kind of stop the snake progression. Because the one thing that I that I have said, so I've done a few coaching sessions since uh, the last layout break uh, break layout breakdown. <laughs> since the last layout breakdown that I've done, I've done a couple of coaching sessions. Which if you guys are interested in having a, uh, either a private one on one or like a team. A coaching session with me where uh, there's a lot of things we can do we can talk about principles of paintball strategy uh, specific to your needs or we can cover a layout in particular i get a lot of requests to cover very small tournament layouts and um, if you guys want me to do that i'm happy to but that is a coaching session i, I don't i'm not going to upload a video um to like a small rinky dinky tournament because it's just nobody's going to watch it so if you do want me to cover a specific layout that isn't like an nxl uh, feel free to reach me out. We can schedule some time for that. But one of the things that we talked about in my recent coaching session was how to come up with creative solutions to the snake problem. Um, namely that like if you if if the snake is is designed in such a way that you kind of have to be in the snake to stop them going down the wire, um, there ought, there has to be another answer other than we just have to match them, right? Now, there's been a lot of cases. There's been a lot of layouts where there really just isn't enough creativity uh, that allows you to stop the snake without just matching it. I, and I would say, unfortunately, this looks to be that case. So not a lot of bunkers that appear to uh, to really be able to stop the snake. The only thing I will say is you probably do have a fair bit of bounce shots. Given that these are such small gaps in between, you probably have a fair bit of bounce shots to uh, to bounce in towards the snake and at least pressure them to slow them down but it does look like the safest thing to do is just to match the snake. So we'll talk about that a little bit later once we get, get to the snake side. But now let's look at the Dorito side. The other thing we didn't really look at actually is cross shots. So <coughs> from the snake side, cross shot towards the number two, I would say on the Dorito, you could shoot the one actually. That's a big enough gap, you could shoot the one. So actually, interestingly enough, there seems to be quite a bit of opportunity to be shooting cross field using the the center wedges or the center bricks as, as blinds but shooting these cross field gaps um i think it was right there these aren't perfect perfectly drawn but so there's there's opportunity there so be aware of that um is there anything farther i mean there is but 
you're pretty open which this does tell me then that there's going to be a lot of paint coming back at home just off the break a lot of people are going to be putting their first like three to five balls towards the home as you're running out to your spot so you're not going to be able to do this for free but those gaps are there uh same sort of deal in this situation there's definitely a big gap here that if you were to take a knee you could shoot through that's a really deadly gap too that's one that would be that would suck to go through um so def definitely apply pressure back at the home um and then as we continue out here's that gap from the home's perspective this is this gap right here so shooting that pretty much the most natural gap that you can see from the home it's pretty obvious there's nothing really crazy about that there is also this gap here which is looking at the dorito one so you can shoot the dorito runner a little bit better i would say than you could the snake runner um but that's just based on appearances so again that's just because i'm assuming that this gap right here to shoot the snake guy is pretty that's a you got to drop that bad boy in so um this one is a lot easier it looks like to get there so then if you if you pass this spot it doesn't mean you're free you're not you're not safe to go but your per, your first primary gap that you're really concerned about is between the tower and the can uh so once you pass that spot yeah so this is that gap right here so depending on how tall the back center is so here's the thing my well no he really doesn't have to drop it very low yeah he could easily get that paint in there never mind i was gonna say if he has to i was thinking he had to be really tall to get that paint to drop down he does not so you are actually you're not safe <laughs> you're not really that safe once you pass this first gap you do have a bit of a of a blind area so for example let's say let's say in a standard breakout you're sending your number one here and your number two here there is opportunity that if the one if you were to tiger uh the, the two in front of you and the one is diving into his Dorito with his head down, you do have a lot of freedom to move up the middle. So like, again, in this example, we're imagining that we've tigered the can in front of us and the only dude that's alive is the snake and he's diving into his bunker. You know, generally speaking, the snake guy's gonna play heads up, right? Like, or excuse me, the Dorito guy. Attackers play heads up for the most part, right? Unless there's a specific job that they're trying to, to do, we can assume that they're going to get to their spot and look look towards their opponent. And if that's the case, if we tiger them early, we actually do have a lot of space to play with in this whole entire area. So this entire lane or channel is super free, which also does allow us to then take this kind of inside route, right? Because by the time the home picks up on what we're doing, we're we're underneath that paint. So this this would be a danger zone for sure the the home's paint could kill us here if we're not careful so <laughs> it could be a situation where you just either go to the middle spots and you go to the wedge or you kind of slide into the can and then maybe you challenge the home but again if you get here and wrap now the home can't do anything so you could you can't really zone control here i will say and you're not in a great spot um yeah that snake one would toast would just absolutely toast you so i was thinking if you could get here you could you could zone the the home guy out completely like there's just no way you can get through this gap but this guy would would ruin your day um but that does mean that there is some pretty decent zone control opportunities if you target the one instead so if you killed the one let's say you need a fast point right and if you tiger the the front dorito guy and the only dude that's left is this can dude uh if you win this gunfight and let's say just for the sake of simplicity the home is not looking your way you could probably punch up here really quickly and then play on the outside of the spot such that the snake can't see you super well so you play like right here for example and so you can keep visibility on this guy if he's trying to wrap on the inside and shoot at you but then you have this big gap you can watch as well and if you play on the outside of the spot now all of a sudden snake can't see you snake one can't see you anymore so you're using the pin to kind of create this artificial bunker in front of you um you know you always run the risk that if the home comes out to the tower he could shoot your loader your knee whatever it depends on how big you are um and how small this actually ends up being at your at the field but this is an opportunity i'm just pointing that out but i do like the uh i do like the the alternative gap route so if you guys get in a straight matchup battle you kill the number two this guy immediately taking this route and diving i actually really like that and again the, the alternative is to go here but you're just kind of abandoning you're you're abandoning your teammate in this case um which prevents him from pushing the dorito side quicker so but you do set up a trap which is great um as far as the dorito on dorito violence um i it does look like it if you were to shoot paint right here 
that paint would then bounce towards this outside zone. Um, so just be careful about that. You can't completely ignore each other, it looks like. You can for the most part. I think if you get right here, for example, um, you can't see each other, obviously. The guy can't shoot you directly. You just have to be careful if that paint is coming your way or not, but you can definitely see it. So this does look like um, the main battle is primarily between you and the can. So the one thing the one thing i'm finding very quickly is that this is such a traditional layout that this is this is honestly like one of the best layouts to teach fundamental paintball on uh in my opinion uh just because there's so many really uh straightforward battles in this situation so in this case the number two is the guy who's going to stop you right the one's probably not going to stop you unless he's like free to wrap on the inside which shouldn't be the case um, or if the home player ends up filtering out to the tower, to the Dorito tower and shooting your way, then you have a two man problem, right? But I wonder, mm. so, it, I mean, yeah, if they're in the wedge, that would suck too. But I, I feel like people are, I feel like a lot of time, well, well, we can't, I can't really say that yet, but I was going to say, I feel like people are going to stop at this on the breakout. And if not, they're going to be, you know, still crawling to get to this wedge and then hold the job. So if you get here with your head up or at least get it quickly, uh, get your head quickly up, you could dive here, immediately challenge the two and see if you win that or not or whatever, however confident or comfortable you're doing that. And then if you win that, you're probably safe to take this bite pretty quickly. But and at, whatever the case is, even if you wrap for a second, you could probably see a dude and his barrel staring at you if they were trying to set a trap for you uh, before you'd have to commit the, to this move. So that's helpful. So, okay. Uh, I just wanted to look at the baseline. We were just looking at the Doritos uh, for a second. But now we're going to talk about... We're going to talk about the snake, then we're going to go back to the Doritos, and then we're going to do the middle, okay? So actually, let's change it up. Never mind. We're going to do the middle first because I feel like the middle reveals a lot about either, either side's push potential. So we're going to do the middle first, then we're going to do the snake, then we're going to do the Doritos. So again, from the middle, we've got this back center bunker, lots of opportunity over the top. So if you're a tall back center, this is, this is the layout for you. I feel like there's so much visibility this and in fact yeah this your entire range of visibility is really this you can't see as much uh on the snake side really in this entire area depending on how tall they're running so you do have a bit more visibility on the dorito side uh if i were to just look at it from a gaps perspective so you do have you have one more gap you can see than the snake in my opinion um you do see a snake player running in front of this corner though if they are going into the snake off the break so you do have this visibility to your right but as far as like actual bunkers that blind you, there's quite a bit, there's a little bit more on the snake than there is on the Doritos. Over the top stuff is definitely there. And what I like to do, so I've, I actually taught this at uh, WCPPL. If you guys played that layout, you'd know what I was talking about. But that was a layout in which the home shot towards the snake was so important that you had to shoot it every time first. But that's kind of the, that's the thing you did is you would shoot the gap and they would either go through it or they wouldn't regardless of what that of regardless of what they did almost always regardless you would then immediately put your you know your your paint back towards the home so depending on if the guy went through the gap or not you know you you'd probably want to stay on that but there were times where even if the guy didn't go through the gap i would want some paint towards the middle because then it stops this this uh really quick secondary move up to the middle so i typically advocate shoot the wide runner as a way to hold like a safety net, hold the safety net and then punish the middle. Cause a lot of times people are going to want to do the same thing where they're also going to want to shoot for the runner off the break. Since you know, you may as well use that home body that you have and then you push the middle and it's on that, it's on that quick secondary move that you can catch a lot of free kills if you shoot back towards the home. So be aware of that. Um, if we decide to come up towards this tower on the Dorito side, really good bunker in terms of, yeah, wow. Uh, honestly, you're kind of, you're kind of in trouble the moment somebody gets into the snake, not in trouble, but like you're, you're that person. As soon as they get to snake two, you, they have visibility on you. So depending on what your call is for the end, to be fair, if they're wrapping the snake one, they could see you as well. I don't think that's going to happen, but you need to have snake two be the call that, you know, 
kind of gut checks your positioning. You should always play really tight in your bunkers, regardless of where, where your opponents are at. But Snake 2 is that first first call that if you're playing this spot looking Dorito way, you need to hear when you hear Snake 2, oof, I got to be careful because this next Snake guy can, can roast me. It doesn't look like he could dig you out until he gets to Snake 4, depending on how you were going to call, like, name these. That's a crazy amount of snakes. Is that actually Viper? Yeah, I'd probably call it Viper. So, eh, actually, this is this would be Viper. So this is <laughs> this is Snake 1, 2, 3, 4, Viper. That's kind of wild. But if you heard Snake 4, that's kind of where you'd need to be. You need to be getting some help to get out of here if you were playing this spot. The obvious about this position is that you have really great gaps to hold. You would you would need to shoot, probably. I would say you'd probably need to be shooting paint through this gap instead of responding to somebody running. Um, it is possible, I guess, you could try it, but it is possible that you aim your paint right here for the bottom corner of that Dorito, and it bounces up into them. So you could try this at practice, not shooting through this gap and letting somebody take the bite and then immediately starting to shoot this little corner and shooting for them. You might find that that's a really good way to to uh, hold this. But otherwise, you know, you've got really great visibility into the next move from that Dorito one to two or Dorito one to baby, maybe can't see the baby. Uh, so that does mean that if you wanted to stop the baby, you'd have to just dump a bunch of paint through this little spot, which I don't love. I don't love holding blind gaps. It's really, really crappy because you have to telegraph that you're doing that. Um, and there's no, they have a lot of opportunities to counterplay that. Uh, but then if they get it to, if they get to the Dorito two, again, really straight, really good gaps onto the Dorito two to three move. So that uh, Dorito side tower is really strong. Coming out now, let me change the music. Let me just like turn down the music really quick. I'll just do that. Oh, sweet. All right. So then if we were to continue looking, by the way, if you guys are tuning in live right now, please be sure to hit the like button. And for those of you guys who watch this video after the fact, I really need to preface this. If you guys watch this after the fact and not live, likes still really help. <laughs> so please hit the like button. It helps the channel out a lot. Uh, okay. If we go to the snake side tower now, really solid gap onto that snake runner into here. So really, really solid gap. One that you could probably, if you float it off far back enough, you could probably avoid your mirror depending on how good your form is. So you could probably avoid that guy. I don't think we'll have to check major league, the, the paintballers app, but you might be able to just shoot paint over the beam and kill them as they're sliding in. I'm not so sure about that. Um, but you definitely can stop the, the outside route from the home into the snake, which is really good. So oftentimes the layouts are built in such a way that the corner route is really a safe route into the snake and that the, the biggest risk was, you know, the route you took to get into the corner. But in this case, even if they make it into the corner, you, you have a way to stop them. It is possible for them to take an inside route and completely blind you out. So really the, what's going to stop that is any sort of like middle guy looking for that. Like in this case, if he's looking towards the corner or if you have like a, I don't know, actually it's probably the best chance to have that not happen. Um, as far as, oh, I should have looked at Crossfield stuff. We'll do that in just a second, uh, from that Dorito side tower, but Crossfield really good gaps, really, really good gaps to hold. Again, these are gaps that you can shoot through that have really strong zone control, uh, but that you could survive if they were shooting back at you. So really, really like that. So yeah, I would say that depending on what you're calling the Doritos, I would probably call this Dorito one baby and then Dorito two and three. I would, I would think if you heard Dorito two, that would probably be the first thing you would, you'd really be, you know, ooh, I gotta be careful because the biggest thing, the biggest uh, issue I see like lower divisional players making is that when they go to transition from looking like one direction and then swapping and looking another is that they always wrap way too hard first. And I don't think it's intentional. It's just that they, they don't have in their mind like where the bunkers are when they hear the calls. So I, the, the, my, my rule of thumb, at least until you get comfortable with the field is that you always like, if you're going to look from the snake way in this situation and then be like, Oh, I got to see what's going on in the Doritos. The very first thing you should do is just switch and look first switch and look. Right. And in this case I can, I own this gap, right? Assuming they're not in our Doritos. I own this gap. So then from there, I, I not slow. I can't be slow here. I wrap quickly and then I gain the next set of bunkers Intel. Okay. 
And this is where then, depending on if I see paint coming towards this bunker, away from it, if it's shaking, if there's a if there's a ref staring at him, whatever the case is, this is then where I assess, are they here, are they here, or are they in neither, and I need to start shooting paint in this gap. That's how I assess this situation. So, but you don't, the first thing you want to do is not immediately wrap and look for this gap. Because then there could be a dude here that just blasts you. So hopefully that helps in explaining that. But crossfield stuff is great from this position. So crossfield stuff from here. Uh, I mean, it's the snake. So you, there's only so much. But I will say that there is probably a pretty good opportunity to stop a little bit of snake progression by shooting paint right here. So I do think that paint will drop um, or at the very least will bounce from that spot. Uh, to scare the snake attacker. So I do think that if you can't match the snake and they're still in the snake one, there is chances for you uh, to stop that progression. So again, depending on how tall you are as well, it could be, it's possible always that you're not tall enough and the snake player is too small. But uh, if we look at the next gaps, so, you know, the other thing too is even if they're in the snake two in this case, this is a scary battle for them to take. If you guys play, if those of you who play the snake know, it does not feel good to try and snap into somebody who you think you're pretty sure is staring at you. So, <clears throat> you know, worst case scenario, you just hold safety. If like, for example, you haven't gotten into the snake yet, it's a five on five, they're in snake two, and you, you know, there's, you need to have a call for you to switch in this situation, then there's nothing wrong with staring at the spot. You know, shooting paint through it periodically, making the guy really uneasy. It's also possible for them to just keep going all the way, which always sucks. Um, and then the same is true for here. Again, this is a pretty, pretty decent uh, shot for you. But this is now they are far enough up the field where they can actually get on their knees and get in a proper like kneeling gunfight position to snap you out. And it would be very hard. It's true for this spot, too, I should say. But again you can see that third gap up into the snake four is what i'm calling this and then you it looks like you could see even all the way up until the viper so if you can see them they can see you so that sucks for you but there's chances for you to pluck them out if they're if they make a mistake which is which is good um okay let's push up to the aztec really quick thank you so much 45 of you beautiful people if you're watching it live please hit the like button it helps it out a lot um and then so this gap is really good for you this is a really really good gap and in fact this is a really good bunker um i mean it's not so great if they've passed this zone if they pass this zone it's not great i mean you do prevent the corner it looks like i think you i'm pretty sure confident you pre you prevent the corner from getting in on either side which is great Absolutely, Kyle. Thank you for tuning in, buddy. Um, it does, and this guy can challenge you, right? So that's the other thing that sucks. And these mini, mini Ws are like my least favorite bunker to try and suppress as a number two or a number three, even as a number one. But those of you guys who know, like it's easy if the only if the only thing that your opponent does is like snap on the outside, like that's super easy. But if you're playing against a really good opponent and they, they get really creative and maybe they've watched the SVP paintball uh, <laughs> gunfighting masterclass video. Uh, but if they, if they come on this inside shot, this nipple, and they shoot right for you, there is no way you can react. Like that is a hard hard reaction especially if their paint is on this is a really really hard uh hard reaction so this is a this is a tough spot for you to hold that snake corner out uh it is it is a really good spot for you to shoot this gap though and to prevent them from getting past this tower so i really like that um and then you also have a little bit of you know a little bit of threat you can put towards the home but i would say that if somebody if you were playing this position a lot i feel like the counter would be to just come to the 50 and then stare at this and, and that is a better shot for them than it is for you. Awesome layout. Glad we have the return of the of a local event. I'm so excited. Dude, uh, Texas is never going to not have paintball now. Man, it's it's the new mecca of, of, of paintball for sure. Um, and so then if we... <coughs> assuming that they're not, you know, obviously in Dorito 2, is that? Yeah. If they're not in Dorito 2, you could wrap towards the home and kind of filter yourself into the middle. Again, if this isn't early in the breakout. So that's nice. Big brain paintball Zinger PB. If you guys haven't already, you should uh, you should subscribe to Zinger PB, PB's YouTube channel. Um, he is a mod in the SPP paintball discord. Super good guy. Takes awesome photos. So if you guys need anybody to take photos for you at an event, reach out to him. 
but this is also an opportunity for you to pick up a gap so the thing that i'm noticing a trend here and and we're not going to spend too much time on this is that really your decision on which direction to be looking in any one of these positions is really just a matter of your it's, it's since there's so many opportunities to look in either direction it has a lot to do with where your opponent where your players are at and alive <coughs> and what your original game plan was so we can talk about that towards the end of this but that is that's very fascinating because a lot of times middle bunkers will be obstructed by one bunker or another which makes it so like oh it's kind of like the sudoku of of walking a layout you're like oh i see the only the only real shot this bunker has is towards this way which means this bunker then really ought to look this way even though it can see both sides xyz right you, hopefully you follow that but um so yeah interesting um it just means that you can what whatever your heart's desire is you can do kind of both but the the game plan will then inform which direction you ought to be shooting it looks like so you can hold gaps here um really it's kind of this uh it's really kind of just this dorito two to three bump and this is a really sc scary hold for you because this guy wrapping on the inside has a better shot on you than you do them <laughs> in my opinion just because you're going to have to be pushing into this bunker to survive whatever's going on in front of you. So, um, okay, let's look at the 50 now. This is probably going to be a pretty complicated walk here. So hopefully we'll get through it quickly. All right, so if you stop here, you have a trap potential. Pretty quick reaction time. But there's definitely an opportunity. And this is, in fact, in fact I think a pretty, pretty decent... Um, if you get low, pretty decent uh, trap to set between that two and three, Dorito two and three. Uh, again, for those of you who are just tuning in now, this is kind of what I'm calling it, the Dorito one, baby two, three. Um, so if you get low, definitely a trap opportunity set for that. Uh, towards the snake side, nothing, which kind of sucks. Again, you can always shoot, shoot somebody as they're kind of like, you know, gophering up from the snake. But otherwise, you don't have any gaps you can hold in the snake, which sucks, which kind of makes me feel like this, the home is going to be playing... Uh, at least when it comes to setting up traps, it's going to be playing more towards the Dorito side. But in terms of like applying pressure, it's going to be looking towards the snake. Just because, again, that snake player is going to be scared to put their head up if they think there's somebody in the middle. Uh, not that I would suggest doing this, but if you did go to the snake side wedge, there is more gaps you can hold. And again, this is more in like a trap setting situation. So if, for example, you get found out, they know you're here. We call this China. If you if I were to hear China or if I knew what the call was for my opponents and I hear them calling it like Omega is another common one, Texas, whatever, Trump even. If I hear that call, I might look to get creative and kind of reposition. If my job is still to hold the, hold the Doritos, I might come up here, reposition, and then I'm, I might be looking for those same kind of gaps, but now from a different spot. Um, <clears throat> but you'd have to know what the call is. You'd have to be very confident that you think that, that you're pretty sure that people know where you're at. Um, as far as the snake stuff, this is where it gets kind of, this is where it gets real scary. This is like a, this is a true coin flip in my opinion. Maybe not so much. Maybe your, maybe your chances of survival are more towards like 60, 40. <laughs> if somebody were to poke their head up here, but obviously you have these gaps. This is a situation where in my opinion, you are desperate to kill the snake. So you come here and you kind of post it up waiting. Where's that head going to go? Um, I will say that if, for example, let's say you're looking Dorito way. This is obviously very, I don't mean to get like super in the weeds on this, but let's say you're holding a trap Dorito way and you hear Viper um, or you hear Snake 4 even. <coughs> this is one of those where, because Snake 4 can't really see you. You can't, you guys can't see each other right here. So if you hear Snake, vo Snake 4 and maybe you, or maybe you hear Viper or something, you could either stare at the Viper in this situation, which I'm not sure I would do, but if you could get here quickly and assuming that this guy isn't staring at you, you could as a desperation play reposition and then if you and then stare right here and this guy is going to come up and he's not going to look directly at you almost always he's not going to he's going to look more towards this way so you do have an opportunity to uh to surprise him there again more of a desperation kind of play in my mind heard the coolest call out in vegas for a forward bunker harpoon interesting harpoon's a new one that's kind of cool um i kind of feel like spear would be a cool one why is somebody calling me right now at nine o'clock? I'll have to take that later. So uh, then if I get low here and I snap again, I can set I can set more traps from this position and I can set even further traps, which is really great. 
So I can set traps deeper in from the Dorito 1 to the baby, the baby to the Dorito 2. Um, again, this is one where like, if for example, I somehow, I miss the shot from the Dorito 1 to the baby, and now the baby knows where I'm at and I hear him calling the bunker like crazy. This is one where I would definitely want to reposition and come back. Now I wouldn't want to hold this gap after that, because now I'm just taking myself out of the game right? If the guy was at the baby and I reposition immediately and then start holding this gap, I'm just like wasting time. So as soon as I were to do this, I would either come here and then look for any sort of like middle plays. I would kind of look for these, these sorts of bunkers and moves <clears throat> to see if they maybe were going to come like run me down or match or whatever. Or again, <clears throat> depending on what's going on on the snake side, I might reposition here and then come take this gap. And now I'm still watching the baby, but he has no idea. So, and I could even float off I could even float off pretty reasonably and, and shoot him in that position. So lots of really cool repositioning stuff going that you can do, which is great. Um, and then if I were to jump over, which is always an opportunity and I'm on their side, really, there's not a whole lot to talk about here because you just kind of have to walk the field and, and get reps on it, right? Obviously, you can see everything here, but nothing is free. So this is really kind of a, I want to go run through and run down people. Um, and I want to, or I want to surprise people and set up traps. So making this type of committed move up the center really needs, you need to have a plan in, in mind. You can't just come here and then hold a gap, right? Because you have no way of, of knowing if somebody's going to come run you down in this situation. So it is possible that if you have adequate protection from wide players, so, <coughs> excuse me. So for example, if you had kind of this, uh, this crisscross hold, probably have to come from this dude. If you had this crisscross hold, then you could play this spot. But now you trade whatever you, you know, you're trading forward progression and your front players for protecting your middle guy. And it feels like it, it's a pretty overcommitted move, in my opinion. So I probably wouldn't make this move unless you just plan to get a quick kill and maybe another one right after. So be aware of that. I do think people will do that. I do think people will go into that spot and try to be really sneaky. But. <laughs> just uh yeah because it's de i could definitely see a situation where somebody make this makes this move quickly and then stays here and then somebody comes and crawls and just gets shot in the back but really it, it's just as best as you can keep visibility in the middle the better so keep your head on a swivel both youth number threes and twos so there is that let's talk about the uh snake side really quick how are we pacing we've been streaming for I just like to keep tabs so I know if I'm on time. That's not going to tell me. We've been streaming for 37 minutes. So we're making good time. We're making good time. <clears throat> okay. So, snake side. Um, so what's going to stop us from getting into the snake if we're in the corner? So definitely this guy. This guy can stop us pretty easily. Um... I would think I would think the Aztec could kill us if they're playing pretty tall. So it's really just a matter of checking that off. And I think that your best bet in getting that kind of intel is this this angle. I really, really like this angle for several reasons. One, this dude is not going to be shooting for this. There's no way. <coughs> Excuse me, I've had a bad cough that's like hard to get, hard for it to go away. So... <clears throat> But this guy's the guy that I was saying you could surprise. If you put, if you came here and put paint right there, I think you kill this dude if he's standing tall trying to stop you. So look out for that. <clears throat> but also, if this tower guy knows you're here, he has to shoot that gap. And then you can see that paint, which is great. So, and also you can see if the home is looking your way too, or kind of what's going on assessing the middle. But the nice thing is if you, if you put this together, that the, the tower guy is still shooting at you, you can actually float off from here. No, that's kind of far, actually. I'm not sure. I'm not sure you could do that, actually. That pin that pin really stops it. But if you get taller, <clears throat> if you kind of stand up full over the top, and let's say there's not a guy here and the, the home isn't looking your way, I know, very, very contextual, you could shoot paint right here. Get this guy. This had to be like an immediate stand tall shoot for this. Get this guy to flinch, and as soon as he does, then you take the bite. If you had to. Pretty risky play, but if you had to, you could. The crossfield... Uh, shot from the snake one is great towards the uh, the baby move. So from the Dorito one to the baby, L huge gap for you to shoot through, which is great. 
benefits of doing this is you remain productive if you can't push the wire by shooting a gap cross field and you gain visibility of the middle, which is awesome. So the biggest con of this is you're not pushing the snake, you're not threatening the wire, and you're the wire guy, but also um, you're telegraphing what you're doing. <clears throat> so people can see this cross field shot. Like if there's a number two, you can have definitely see your paint shooting cross field. So that would suck. Um, but if you're stuck here for whatever reason, let's say you both are kind of battling each other and it's getting too scary and you want to take a second, this is definitely a worthwhile gap to hold. Um, the other thing is I, I'm pretty confident that that can on the Dorito side now having looked at, yeah, looking at it from here, I'm pretty confident that can guy can shoot at you. So, but this is a blind gap for him. That's a gap that he just has to shoot through constantly. What does that look like from here? Oh, interesting. I don't, I don't think I put that together when I was looking at the Dorito side. <coughs> so yeah, you absolutely could stop that snake guy but you'd have to commit to shooting it. So, which if we do this, we slow our Dorito push because we require one of our support players to dedicate his time towards the snake. So this might be an if A, if A then B kind of thing. So for example, you might come here and play business as usual. And then if you hear snake, <coughs> you immediately switch. Um, or you could, you know, you could come here and hold that to start and then listen, He's in the god, he's in the whatever, and you he, you know he's not in the snake, then th that's also then you switch. That's an alternative. Why is the why is the music? It's not really consistently streaming. Oh well. Okay, so assuming that this guy isn't shooting you cross field, you're pretty safe. Again, if the wedge, if the wedge is here standing super tall, he would kill you as well. But I don't think the 50 can stop you. Pretty confident that of that. And I don't think really anybody else can stop you, except for, I guess, the tower as well. I think the tower could also shoot at you. So we'll take a look at that. So some pretty decent options to stopping the snake. Coming here now, again, same sort of situation. You can shoot a Dorito gap. Um, knowing when to shoot the gap versus pushing is really just a, an issue of can you push down the snake? If yes, do that. If no, shoot, shoot the crossfield shot. And don't stay committed to it. <coughs> Excuse me. Don't stay committed to it. Um... Do that for a second and then, and then, you know, unless you know somebody's holding the wire, uh, do it for a second and then play heads up again. Okay. So then over the top stuff, this is something that I would try as a snake attacker. I would try to get really comfortable with this. Okay. This music is just stopping constantly. So we're going to be done with that. So if I was a snake attacker, I would try to get really confident in knowing where each of the shots are. If I were to come up over the top of any of these bunkers. And there's there's a there's a level of safety in coming up over the top of this snake, uh, given the fact that as a as a as a number two, <clears throat> right? Not maybe not knowing exactly where you are, the differences in having to shoot somebody coming up in each of these spots is pretty drastic. So, even though you know, there's a lot of times in which you can react to this play because people are slow. Um, even though you can react to it, if you're fast enough, this is a pretty easy way at the very least to gain information. You don't have to commit to like shooting, but like, even if you come up over the top, just super quick to get Intel, this is a really good play as a snake player. So be aware that look for that. <coughs> What's going to stop us now? Um, maybe a bounce shot from the tower or the can again, coming in towards this spot right here. It's possible that paint stops you I, I would be i would be confident in saying that that could stop you they can't see you directly <clears throat> but i do think that that's kind of where the last ditched effort will be to stop the snake player if there isn't anybody matching it obviously the wedge guy again can definitely kill you here um and maybe the dorita one maybe yeah wow that would be that would be quite the shot i mean You'd have to be challenging him because if you got low enough, he couldn't see you. So, but it looks to be the same sort of bunkers on the Dorito side. These two bunkers are looks to be the ones that would stop a snake progression, primarily. Getting up here now. Uh, <coughs> the other thing we look for, as you guys know, excuse me, sorry for the coughing. The other thing we look for is if there are any free kills that we get as a result of of pushing up the field. So we look to see who would stop us because if there isn't anybody, we always go. And then where where are their first shots that we take? when we make a move. So 
Um, <clears throat> it doesn't look to be that there are any free kills here. And honestly, I really don't see <clears throat> a ton of situations in which you would be able to freely challenge this inside shot, given that these two players here are primarily concerned about shooting at you. That's just an assumption I'm making, though. So, And it also might be the case that these are strong bunkers in stopping the snake, but that your opponents do not know that. So it is possible that you take the shot, but... Uh, yeah, be aware of that. Again, I, you this isn't a gap anymore. This is a challenge. You're challenging this Dorito player if he is there. You certainly could shoot this, but if the player wanted to get into this spot, they could dive underneath. So you would just be shooting the, the Dorito 2 if you were in this situation. So it looks like if you're in the Dorito 3 or Snake 3 and you hear Dorito 2, you could look for that shot. Um, who's going to stop us from making another move? Maybe the home. So maybe the home has a bounce. Again, these are all speculative. We'll check. We'll check it out in a little. It might be a case. It might be the case that the home could bounce somewhere on the corner of the cake and challenge you. And maybe the Aztec in front of that. This bunker right here, though, I'm not very confident in that one. <clears throat> Ooh, but you know what? This this looks like a very solid bounce potential. That looks like a solid bounce potential that we'll check out. So, <clears throat> I think you're pretty good to go here. So, once you get here, this is now where, like, you're going to start really making people's lives miserable. So, the can guy, that's a really good shot for you. Scary shot for them because you have this, this mini W blocking a lot of visibility that you can drop paint in on. And then the tower guy is like, <clears throat> that guy's pack's going to get roasted a lot. Or if he's looking at you, he has to now live behind his gun. I wouldn't say that the, t the tower is a free kill because they could play on the outside of that bunker and stay alive. But this is now where you're really starting to like, which is what, the snake four. So certainly <clears throat> I better hope that there is some <laughs> some good kill potential in this position. But like this is where you're really starting to hurt the uh, Dorito side as a result of getting here. And you do have, <coughs> excuse me, you do have the ability to hold a gap. I wouldn't do that at this point. You're far enough up the field that what you're really looking for is to close it's like cause rapid chaos right you want to get a kill quickly and then if you kill that if you kill one of these two guys or both then you do have a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity to maybe wrap and shoot towards the home or this aztec on the snake you know i'm not sure that'd be in both of those spots but you definitely could wrap and, and smoke somebody here i wouldn't wrap any farther than that but that does mean that this at this little mini W could be a surprise bunker. So that could be something that if, for example, somebody from the home was to make this kind of like forward progress, they could post up on you here. And as you come up to shoot towards the tower, in this case, like right here, they would just torture your loader. So um, that would probably be a case in which I really try hard to know what the middle guy is doing to, to, to know if you could do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, one sec. Had this cough for like a week. Sorry for the lack of music. The uh, Guns Up app takes so much Chrome power that it just like kills all, all streaming I try to do on YouTube. So <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so who's going to stop you from making the next move? Um, I I think the home could if they were standing up over the top. I think the home could hit your pack. So now that I've said this, interestingly, there are a lot of opportunities for other bunkers to at least scare the snake or slow the snake progress. So it's not free. It's not like as soon as they get to the snake and they, they can go all the way. At least if you have safety nets in place then there is opportunity for you to to stop the snake progression. But I will say that if you're in this snake, if you're in the snake four, which is what this is, and you wrap, shoot at the home right away, and that guy's not already shooting at you, you 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 either kill this guy or get into flinch, and then you go, right? So unless the home already knows that you're here, I think you kind of win that fight every time. <clears throat> um, and then same sort of shots that you had originally. You could shoot towards the snake, the Dorito can. You would have to worry about the Aztec guy, um, but I think you kind of, you're in a spot now where he's probably dead by the time you get here or about to die from you. 
Really great shot in towards the baby. Super great shot towards the baby. And very, very good shot towards that Dorito 3 is what I... Yeah, Dorito 3. So this is where now you've passed the 50. You're in the Viper. Your first kill is that baby, in my opinion. Uh, well, I guess... <coughs> The home or the snake side Aztec are kind of the first guys to fall. And then once you get here, it's like, look for the baby. Look for the Dorito 3. Those are kind of the first two kills that you'd probably get for free. If for some reason there was somebody here. <coughs> sorry, guys. I'm, I'm sorry for coughing so much. If there was somebody stuck here, this dude is dead for sure. Um, from you, uh, but probably from other people. Like, I mean, even if you were to come here and flow back like that, that guy's dead. So shouldn't be there. <coughs> Anyway, uh, and then past that, we don't really look at, like, kills beyond the 50-yard line just because it's, like, it's pretty obvious. You just really need to... Uh, what you really need to know when it comes to closing out a game as an attacker, you really need to know what the blinds look like in front of you to be safe. So, <clears throat> you know, oftentimes you're rewarded for cross-field kills when you push up the field. So, you know, because you wrap, go, and then look inside. So when, when you get to these types of bunkers, what you're really looking for is what the route needs to be for, for you to blind people in these spots. That's what you're looking for. So you need, to be, you need to be aware of what that line or that route looks like so that you can still get cross-field kills and not worry about the guys in front of you. So, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We didn't really look at this spot, but what I was looking at here originally was just yeah, you could you could definitely surprise somebody uh, if you made this position if you made that bump. And I already talked about how you could get up into this position. Is if you tiger if on the breakout you tiger the number two and you're in this spot, you could definitely punch up, um, <clears throat> or you could take a little bit of a safer route and look very quickly here because you can't like from this position <clears throat> you're not stopping the snake progress right. Once he's in the snake in this spot, there's not really much you can do, which does mean that you either need to get into the snake, which I guess I'm looking at this now. You're probably not the number two. You're probably not the number two in that situation. But that does make me wonder if people are going to double this up. <coughs> wow, this is such a weird layout. Yeah, I kind of wonder if you're going to double this. Because this is the god. Like <laughs> on a traditional layout, this is the snake insert bunker. This is the snake insert. We would call this Cobra or the snake corner. Um, and there's like traditionally another bunker here for the number two. It's like usually somewhere right here, but it's <clears throat> it's all the way up here, <coughs> which does make me think that you probably will see <clears throat> a fair bit of doubling up from the home where the snake, depending on where the snake feels comfortable going, then you kind of do something like this. So... I don't think you you would not want to send two people to this spot off the break. There's, I don't think there's any value in that. <clears throat> but, but like, you know, there's decent stuff that you can do cross field. What you're mostly what a lot of value is from doing this is you actually stop the home the home delayed push up the middle. <clears throat> this is a really good spot to do that. But what I guess back to what I was saying, if you do tiger the guy in front of you and you want to take a little bit of a safer route, you could push up to this Aztec. And then <clears throat> now you're in a spot where you could hold a gap on against the snake, kind of what we talked about earlier, or you could just come in here, surprise him, or you could go all the way up to the 50 and kind of do this. <clears throat> I don't know if I love this, but alternatively, <clears throat> if they're stuck in the snake and you still cut, you know, this guy's dead, they're stuck in the snake one and the home guy, you're not really sure what's going on. You could wrap, make sure this dude's contained for a second and then wrap on the home Check out what he's doing <clears throat> and then wrap right here. And now look, really, your biggest fear is if the snake guy wraps you super hard. But otherwise, if the home is dead or not looking your way, you're kind of you're kind of free to get up to this spot. So I actually really, really like this play. I actually really like this route. Uh, actually, I suppose more this way. <clears throat> I really, really, really like that. <clears throat> I think you will see that quite often this weekend. I'm expecting a lot of bounce shots off the small cakes to hit the snake player. Yeah, there's going to be so many bounce shots into the snake. And like I said earlier, I think there's probably some potential bounce shots. I would say almost definitely bounce shots off of this this pin into the snake. May, well, maybe. I'm looking at it from this perspective. <clears throat> Where would that go? Yeah, the angle's not there. I was thinking if you could, I was thinking if you shot here, <clears throat> they could bounce right here to hit this guy. I don't, I don't, I'm not so confident. <laughs> I 
now looking at it, and I don't, they're not going to go like this, I don't think. Where they're really going to go is probably right here. <laughs> they're going to all fall right here, but definitely, definitely a chance, or vice versa. Um, let's say... Hmm. Sorry. Yeah, the pin is not in a great spot. I was going to say, maybe there's a bounce from here to here. <laughs> I think there's a bounce there. But the problem is, is that that guy can just shoot at you. So, right? Like, he can just see you. So there's not really any hiding from each other. Maybe it's the can? Maybe the can has that? I don't know. That's a pretty harsh angle. I was going to say, maybe the can can shoot this. Ugh, this tool. <laughs> not very, not super confident in that. But there's definitely, like, it, it, there's some kind of Dorito side shot. There's got to be some kind of Dorito side shot that comes in in one of these two spots. I think it might be the baby that bounces. <coughs> but even if that's the case, the baby's, again, that's the baby. Like, you're shooting at the baby. So, like, that bounce doesn't matter. Maybe it's the Dorito one. Maybe it's the Dorito one. I would try that. I would try that Dorito one bounce and <coughs> see if that's the thing. Love that move to the wedge. Got to get two in the snake to capitalize after the trade. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure if you're the only guy on the snake side, you would not want to take that inside move unless you're desperate to win the point. And that's like some kind of weird down body situation. But like <clears throat> if I'm the number one and I see my number two go up to the wedge and into their side of the snake, my first thing is like I'm going to try to own the wire on the snake guy and make sure that he, you know, he can't go anywhere. And then I'm going to start pushing to help this dude. Uh, the baby is also a lot of spray and prey panic into that snake. I agree. So hard to get, get to in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah. The baby is going to be hard to get to. All right. We've spent a lot of time on the snake. Let's go to the Dorito. We did the middle. So let's go to the Dorito and then we'll look at uh, paintballers for the last little bit. We've been streaming for coming up on an hour now. So <clears throat> let's definitely finish this up. So if we were trapped and we needed to, if we were matched but trapped, this is a fairly straightforward gap to fight through. But if the home is stained, trained our way is what I meant to say. If the home is shooting our way, this is a really tough spot to get through because you're going to see that paint, but it's going to be really, there's only one spot to go, right? There's not a corner bunker. It's just the Dorito one. What I will say, however, <coughs> is that this channel is really a good channel to work through to get into various spots into the snake or into the Doritos. So that is a really good opportunity. It's really just a factor of the guy in front of you seeing you. And obviously, you know, <coughs> the, the other disadvantage is that the ones don't see each other. So the one can, as soon as they come here, immediately start to control that little box that we just drew. So that does suck for you. <coughs> but like I said, if you get here, you hear Tiger, Tiger the, you know, Lucy, Tiger the two, or Tiger the, we would call that the Bravo, but <laughs> this would be the Bravo. If we said Tiger the Bravo and it was in the breakout, like I just got to my spot and I'm here and I'm shooting paint at the, at the Doritos, I would still, I would feel pretty comfortable coming up here and then taking a dive right here, <clears throat> looking for this dude. And then if I was like really getting antsy and I'd heard like, let's say I heard the God. I heard the God, the Cobra, the home. So I know they're not in snake. <coughs> Sorry guys, man. Then I would, I would come over here. I would be careful about the home, but I'd, I'd come here and probably look for this, but that's going to be a hard, this, this Dorito guy is going to be really, really tough to dig out. I feel like he can wait you out. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Doritos. Sorry. I got distracted. We already looked at the puzzle here. It's a pretty standard one. You got to shoot the, you got to shoot the number two that's stopping you. And hopefully the home's not looking your way. Then you get up to the baby, which is a big gap, right? We're making it. Oh, I guess I should say we're making an assumption the snake one is not shooting this. <laughs> so we find that the snake is easy to get to. That means that both both teams are getting to the snake off the break. This is going to be a very, very common gap that people will shoot off the break. Because that gap will slow down the Doritos more than anything else. There is no other gap on this field that will slow the Doritos down quite like that one. Um, it's just a matter of if they can get to the snake or not. So be aware of that. And unfortunately for you, there is no counterplay. You have literally no option to stop that guy. You can't stand tall enough, you know, wrap wide enough 
float off the bunker enough to shoot that guy to stop that paint. The only opportunity you have is if your snake player is um, is threatening the tape. So that's the and that at that point it's on your snake side to start relieving pressure in that case. But this is where like <laughs> if it's a if it's a four on five and you lost your snake player. That's like kind of an, you know, you have to really, uh, <laughs> you have to punish them for mistakes and more than likely you'd have to push the middle to stop that hold. So just to kind of illustrate this point, so you guys hopefully are following me. <clears throat> if all else was equal, equal, and we were in this situation, uh, but they were in the snake here, 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 oh, excuse me, three, two, one. <coughs> This in my mind is all is like a one move away from checkmate, in my opinion. Obviously, it's paintball. There's a I dude. I've been drinking. I've been. I mean, I know it's soda, so it's not the same. But like, I promise you, water doesn't help. This thing has been tickling my throat for a week. Um, so <clears throat> this crossfield shot, super super solid. The only way to break this, in my opinion, is uh, is to push the middle, is to alleviate that pressure. So you can push the middle and bait the Dorito side, look for those moves through those gaps and kill them. Or you can try to set up a trap where you kill a snake. The The nice thing is that if this dude only does this, that's the only thing he does, and you can reliably assume that's all he's going to do, then pushing up here and getting really crafty and trying to like, you're essentially playing the game around them. It's the same concept as if this dude were to just come here and hold this gap, but this dude, like this is where the bodies are. This guy has essentially taken himself out of the game because he's doing something that nobody is playing. So break out and walk up to the tower, blocking yourself from the home completely ruins any D side push. Up to that tower blocking. Let's take a look. So if we come here, block. Oh yeah, wow. <clears throat> huge, 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 huge gaps. Huge gaps all the way. So, so much. So that's going to be really, really hard to run through. Um, hmm. <coughs> wow. Wow, that's really, that's a really solid, yeah, wow. Man, there's no counterplay to that. <laughs> Actually, I will say, the, the tower guy running out right here, this is where that, this is where that kill is going to come from. Shooting up over the top of this. That's where that kill will come. Because this dude's going to prioritize accuracy since he's safe very quickly off the breakout. This dude's going to come out here and then kind of float up as he prioritizes accuracy. So if you come out wide shooting all of your paint in this gap, that's going to that's going to threaten that. Good, good catch. That's a great, great catch. <clears throat> okay, well, let's assume that we can push the Doritos. Sorry, I keep getting distracted from this. I really I apologize. If we are somehow able to get to the baby then it looks like, assuming that the wire is not an issue, that we can kind of blind a lot of people here. So <clears throat> don't have to worry about the two in front of us because, uh, he, you know, from where he's at, he can't see us unless he's at the can. This closer can, I don't think even he could see us. He could shoot this. I will say it's possible there's so many bounces in this layout. It's possible that this guy could shoot a bounce onto you. So just be aware of that, but you should see that paint. But this crossfield shot, you can challenge them on, so you can shoot at them. And then assuming the snake is still not looking your way, <clears throat> I think you're safe to get through this gap. So the, the Dorito 1 to Baby is pretty rough. Baby to Dorito 2, not as bad. And then stopping you on this next move. Again, more bounces. It's going to be Bounce City forever. <clears throat> but now... This is a really dangerous spot for to be in. Um, now you control two people with one gap. If for whatever reason they were stuck in these two positions, um, that zone from that Dorito 2, was that Dorito 3? No, that's Dorito 2. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So if they are, if they are able to get to this spot, there's just no way. <clears throat> You're never getting out of this containment. So you really, really, really have to stop them. <clears throat> but or threaten them in front like obviously if you're in the wire this isn't free but if you've tigered so if you've tigered one on the wire they get you get to the dorito two and the other guy's right here like this you're so you're just chilling forever i think <clears throat> assuming that guy well no actually i think that guy could bounce you i think he still could hit you so if you get low enough i think you're okay but we'll check it out 
I don't think you need to worry too much about this sort of inside, you know, wrap and go. I think this guy has to just dump all of his paint at you if he's going to stop you. So you should be able to assess that. And you can even come in on the inside and see, oh, yeah, he is shooting at me. And you can either shoot him in back to get him to flinch or you can just ignore it all together. And then once you get up to this Dorito, uh, Dorito 3, we'll call it, up to the Dorito 3. No free kills just yet. But I will say that if you hear Viper, so if you're in this spot, if you're in the Dorito 2 and you hear Viper, um, it's a bit of a 50-50, but instead of holding a zone, I would, it's hard to say, actually, it's impossible to say. But if you come here, your first shot needs to be towards the Viper. And you have to hit that shot. So I would practice, you Dorito 1 players, I would really, really practice this move where you come and slide and your first ball, your first ball needs to hit that snake player. So come in here, slide. First ball needs to hit that target. That Whatever target you can set up here, if you can do that, then you can make that move confidently. Is there a possible, possible bounce off the can for D2 if the player checks inside? <clears throat> Like we have to play 100% of the time in D2. Is there a possible bounce off the can for D2 if the player checks inside? I'm not sure I follow your question. So if I if I come here, <clears throat> well, so certainly I can come here and check off the home or check off that can guy. Let's just take a look from this can's perspective. What does that look like? I don't know. I mean, I think you could still threaten them. But I don't know if you're stopping that. I think, especially if they get low enough, I, you're not you're not stopping them from moving. It's, I, yeah. Was that you're you're talking about a bounce off the can though? None of these cans could be bounced off of, and it hit hit the Dorito. Um, <coughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't think this is what you're talking about. But I don't think there's any bounces that can come off of that meaningfully. Um, yeah, so maybe, <coughs> maybe explain further in the chat and I'll see if I can take a look. Okay, we're almost done and we'll look at breakouts. Then we'll do the whole paintballers thing. Sorry, this is taking a little bit longer, but if we come here, wrap, um, now this is where we have to refight the can guy. So if we do make it up to the Dorito three, we can't ignore the can guy anymore, but now we can do a lot of damage on the inside. We can definitely kill the home player, the tower guy, uh, depending on how loose this dude's playing on the snake. But we can isolate the the, the crossfield shots, which is nice. Assuming there's not a Viper, we can isolate the crossfield shots and not have to worry about the number two killing us. So we kind of make him feel a little uncomfortable. Oh, I got the question. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So if we get low, well, this is, this is now a challenge we have to make. I would really try to avoid this fight as much as possible. I would try to avoid the outside shot unless you need to kill this dude but if, if you've tigered one on the outside let's say it's a five on four you've tigered their dorito one attacker and the dude's stuck in the can i would try to avoid that can battle for as long as i possibly could just because if they're in like kind of standard bunkers and you've gotten here within like the mid game so you've probably gotten here within like a minute of the game I think that you're going to be able to control so much of what's going on in the field by just being alive and looking on the inside so you definitely stop all middle moves if they haven't gotten to the middle already. And you stop really any backline re repositions. So assuming you have the proper zone control heads up, which isn't guaranteed, but assuming you have that, <coughs> like, like I think the deadly combo is these two. I think this guy here and this dude here is like the absolute coffin in the nail for your, for your opponents. Hmm. <sighs> No, not necessarily, actually. I mean, again, I'm, I'm ignoring the snake side for a second, but, like, this guy has to kind of challenge him heads on, so not necessarily. <laughs> okay, well, I still think that's a pretty decent setup, but, again, the biggest thing that will ruin your day is that snake. Uncontested snake push will definitely ruin that. It'll just, it'll you will lose the game because of that, so... But we found that the snake, the snake containments can come from these bunkers so these crossfield also what this does tell me is that you really really as best as possible you need to avoid this you need to avoid this it's probably that you will be playing this a lot because 
the Dorito gap is so big and this this move up the up to the spot shooting is really strong. But that means that <clears throat> as soon as that guy gets into the snake, he's he's destroying both of you. He's he's absolutely containing both of you here. Curl will have a field day on that center. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. So I guess it's not to say that you can avoid this. Just try to get out of this as fast as possible because this, it's a ticking time bomb in my in my opinion. But okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at breakouts and then let's look at uh, some more angles and bounce shots uh, when we do the paintball stuff. I haven't actually loaded paintballers yet, so maybe it won't work very well. So we'll see. Um, but <clears throat> it looks like there are this this inside route is very very strong very very strong <clears throat> and i would say that although you can shoot the doritos like you have a really really solid gap towards the dorito side from the home and this guy can shoot the doritos as well i don't know if i'm as worried about the dorito side as i would be the snake because the gap is so big for me to shoot the Doritos. So this is really a matter of like, are, do, who are your shooters on your team? Are they good? Or are your opponents better on the Doritos side than you are? You know, there's a lot of variables you could weigh in here, but I think objectively speaking, I would probably just keep one gun Dorito away and really like you need to hit the shot. That's kind of like what I would say. So your default kind of play, in my opinion, is going to be this. <coughs> oh, excuse me. One, two, three... Unfortunately, it's probably this. I say unfortunately, but this is like the most default. I mean, of course, we all saw this coming, right? We all knew this was going to be it. But um, I, I don't love this kind of inside pocket, like three-man pocket, but it's just what the field lends itself to. So, uh, and I don't love it because you, your two can't really help your snake into the snake. So that's the thing that I don't love. But um, you certainly have a lot of opportunities out of this bunker. And then the snake guy is going to be doing snake things, shooting heads up. And then this three is probably going to be shooting snake away as well. I would put two gun snake, one gun Dorito away, operating off of that. Variations of this could include um, a one, two, three, two, one. Um, advantage here is that you're doubling up the Dorito kill, a Dorito shot, or instead of that, you're you're filtering up to the middle immediately because you're getting decent coverage anyway. On, on both your like wide wide routes. <coughs> so let me draw this a different way. In other words, it would look like this. So you have this guy shooting snake, this guy shooting Doritos, and now you have a middle presence, also an option. Um, <clears throat> as you guys know, anytime I like draw these breakouts, what I'm really uh, all I really care about is like imparting unto you guys the levers. That you need to that of, of control here you know like oh if they're if they're a team that likes to go this way this is kind of the adjustment you'd want to make for that i really would never uh especially not having played the layout i would never like say this is a good breakout it's just something to try um, and explore so the run through the middle is extremely safe for the most part and posting up at snake side wedge let him challenge the mirror or drop balls in corner so snake can get in oh interesting okay <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is certainly like I should I should say that this is kind of your option when you decide to send a guy to the middle. So it's very possible that like there's really no reason to double stack the home or have that many shooters up off the break, but instead have this dude come up the middle. <coughs> and in which case. Um, I kind of like the snake side up the center route. The other thing uh, that I will say is this dude coming here, whoever is going to this spot, unless you're just dying, I really think you need to be challenging this this Dorito gap over the top. I think you need to be challenging this zone every single point. You can challenge it as well from the home. The home could also shoot it. It's just not good because this guy is trying to get out of dodge looking at you specifically. <laughs> but I do think these I do think these two spots are going to be shooting at each other a decent amount. Doing so will force this guy to go here quickly or not at all or double it up. So for example, you might cause a situation in which your two doubles up with your home and then once the point settles that he comes up here. But um as far as the one really it's like how how safe is it to get them 
uh, as wide as possible in any given point. That's the thing I assess. And I obviously have, you know, uh, restrictions that I usually apply to my breakout. So I don't love risking both bodies wide <coughs> on the same breakout. But there are times in which I do that because it's it's fine. It's it's relatively safe or it's necessary. But just as a default principle, I don't love doing that. But the issue is this layout looks like it's going to be dangerous to get past the Doritos almost every time. So the way that I see this the way that I see the game developing is that I think initially this guy is going to have a heyday on the Dorito players. But if you can start getting this shot, this crossfield shot really dialed in and either killing this guy or forcing him to double the home, then is when you open up opportunities for your snake guy to get there off the break or your Dorito guy. <clears throat> so I think you kind of have to earn that. But if you do, then is when you can, then is when you can really start opening up your plays, you know, then you can start doing this where you're doubling the home. Um, and your snake guy kind of does whatever in this situation, but now you have tons of opportunity, tons of play. Um, it just sucks that if, if you don't really explore that, the widest you ever go on this field is this spot. That's not good. So you really want to find ways in which you can get yourself out wider. As far as that for the snake, um, usually the way that I like to get my snake players into a snake is I like to support it through some kind of up the gut shot. Cause the thing is some of you, some of you threes. Some of you guys are lazy and you play off the bunker like nobody's watching. So some of you guys straight from the box are really tall, really loose. Hoppers are way out. And I, I note that as a coach and I would, if I was a player, I would note that as well because I don't, wouldn't need a coach to tell me, Hey, this dude's playing really loose off his spot. Like I'm just going to shoot that. So this is again a situation where like depending on what the game plan is or how likely they are to take the snake off the break like if for example you you're responsible for stopping the snake but you know that people are for the most part stopping at this tower my first three balls are for sure going towards the back center if i'm playing the home they're going towards the back center and then they're shooting for the snake and the reason is because if i'm wanting to go to the snake I want to increase my snake chances play uh, his his run as much as possible. I want to increase his chances of survival as much as possible. And the best way to do that is to shoot back at the home guy right away. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. And, and again, it could be that you plan. It doesn't mean that you like take the snake off the break immediately, but that your game plan revolves around you taking a route that you don't suspect they'll shoot and then killing the guy that was stopping them and then taking the bite immediately after. <coughs> So there's lots of ways you can do that. But um anyway, hopefully that hopefully that like I want to give you the mechanisms of control in this situation so that if you run into a problem where you say, "Oh hey, we can't ever get into the snake and they can." What was it that SCP was talking about? Oh, it's we got to shoot back at the home in this case. So this is assuming that the home player is the one that's stopping you. And it's also possible that if you can't actually match them, let's say they're faster, you're not as good a good of shots as they are, you could certainly still play uh, play up, you know, up, oh my gosh, play pocket. But now what you're doing, I'd actually probably do this instead. I wouldn't do this, by the way, if I could help it. I would not. I would try to always make breakouts that do not involve this. So if I plan to put my three up the middle, I would probably not put my number two right here as just kind of a lever of control because it's really awkward if this dude is here and this guy's here because now they're doubling up on a job if they're both looking snake way and if they if the, the Aztec guy wants to be productive and he looks Dorito way, well now, if they're in any of these two spots, he is useless for as long as he does this, right? There's just not, you're not getting any value being in this spot. So you should have not put him there in the to begin with. So if you're going to do this wedge play, just double up, not double, but have your have your number two stay home. And then it doesn't really matter what's going on on the Dorito side as long as it's safe. <coughs> but now I don't actually have to match them in the snake. What I'm really trying to do is cause chaos in the middle and either pluck out some people on the Dorito side or out of the middle um, or just really kind of set up a trap for the snake player to then work myself in. So anyway, okay. Hopefully that makes sense. I know we don't we didn't spend as much time on the uh, the breakouts as we normally do. I really do think this is a very uh, relatively straightforward layout. The biggest challenge is to knowing which side of the field to look. I guess we could talk about that for just a sec because I did mention that just for a second. So <clears throat> what you there's a few things you need to be aware of when you try to, when you try to determine which direction of which direction should I be looking. So absolutely, uh, Baby Shady, no problem. So let's just ignore the snake side for a second. 
Okay. We learned in our walkthrough that these two bunkers are pretty okay at stopping or at least slowing the snake side progression. So not only do they have really good heads up shots, but they also have really good cross field shots, really good, relatively speaking, right? So if I were to look now at the snake side of the field, that is not necessarily the case. So this guy can stop the Dorito three to Dorito four push. And so can this guy, he actually can shoot a little bit deeper, but <clears throat> given that these gaps are so big and that the number two, uh, well, I guess it depends. Um, I would probably, here's how I would approach this. I would give priority to stopping the snake than I would stopping the Doritos, assuming that this is going to be a snake side heavy field. And my assumption is that it will be simply because if you don't match the snake, the guy goes all the way, right? So you can always shoot a bat. You can always shoot through a big gap. Okay. But we can't shoot through any gaps on the snake. So we have to find spots to slow it down or stop it. So if we cannot match the snake, we need to know where we need to be to, to slow it down. And we found that it's these cross field shots. So if this is how I would approach it, if the, if I hear snake two, three, four, this guy's job will be to switch. It really ought to be that when you hear snake two, you or when you hear snake one, you switch, or when you hear snake two, you switch. You wouldn't want to do it when it's already past that point. But if you hear snake one, and maybe you would come up with a call, right? So maybe you say snake one danger or something. Danger could be the call to say, hey, one of you Dorito guys needs to look cross. As soon as this guy makes the choice to stop looking Doritos, then is when either this guy or this guy looks cross. Now, given that this is the God Bunker, I would not typically want this guy to do that. So let's say, for example, you took a conservative breakout, okay? Let's say, uh, well, we'll not even say conservative. We'll say this, <clears throat> okay? Actually, we'll make it even, we'll make it even more pocket play. Um, so this is the pocket play, okay? And let's say you hear Snake One in this situation. Okay, so everybody is playing heads up for the most part. Then their first mechanism of control is going to be that this guy looks for that, that snake one to two move. The second mechanism of control is going to be not the number one shooting cross, but the number two getting to this spot and holding the Doritos. That is the if A, then B play. Now, you can do that in response to what you hear, or you can do it preemptively to be in position to make something happen. So instead your breakout could look like this. Like you guys are following this. I don't need to belabor this point, but <coughs> excuse me. I just think it's really important that the guy who needs to know what's going on in the snake is this dude more so than this guy. Because again, if this guy, if any one of our attackers looks cross field, that is a side of the field. We are no longer pushing. So I don't love doing this, but if you're in a down body situation, uh, let's say, Let's say it's a four on five or maybe, yeah, we'll just say it's a four on five and your four is you've got a guy here, 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 and here. Okay. So your number two on the snake side is dead and you hear snake. This is, a, this is a, or no, excuse me. You hear Dorito. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You hear snake. Okay. So this guy's looking snake way. And then this dude's looking now he's now switched in this particular moment you would want to hold this for a second until your three can either get here or or until your your dorito one attacker can kind of come down the wire and stop that push but hopefully that makes sense really what i'm trying to get at is i think this weekend or that weekend it's going to be this guy's job to slow the snake down more so than it's going to be this guy and i think it's going to be this guy's job to slow down the doritos more so than it's going to be this guy's <coughs> that's my assumption it's a big assumption but I think that's going to be what we see. So anyway, all right. That's enough of that. Um, let's take a look now. You guys are going to see my Steam library here in a second. Let's let's uh, let's try this. I have no idea if this will be any good. So while this is launching, I'm going to go get some water. If you guys uh, wouldn't mind sticking around, great. I'm going to look at the shots for just a minute because I have been streaming for almost probably an hour and a half, actually. Let's see. Yeah, almost an hour and a half. So we're going to do this for maybe like six minutes, but I'll be right back.
Well, hasn't loaded yet. All right. Bring a Coke for you. <clears throat> Dude. I just got really, um, I got really, not really, but like I got pretty sick like seven days ago. It came with, uh, it came with pink eye. So that was fun. I haven't had pink eye since I was a child, but it was, um, it was a viral pink eye as opposed to bacterial. Um, first name default. Oof. Yeah, let's do it. What? I already accepted it. What is happening? Uh, okay. I was there. What happened? Relaunch worked. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, I know this is like the not fun part of rewatching a YouTube video. So for those of you who are watching it live, sorry. For those of you who are watching it back, skip ahead. <clears throat> Man. Okay. Except. All right. You know what? We're just going to be default because who cares? So let's do local or maybe practice. Okay. Practice. Is that a is that an, a, an actual option? I can't seem to <laughs> Maybe this is not worth it. Maybe I needed uh local and practice are disabled. Set up a private multiplayer server. Thank you. You think you wouldn't have those? Uh, I assume LAN only is what I would do that. Uh, create server is private. Yeah, you know, some of you guys are going to be like, oh, get me in there. Um, maybe if this, if this ends up being really cool, maybe we'll actually get some, get some games going at some other time, but not today. Okay. I assume that's everything I need. Dirty bunkers. Oh, okay. Uh, Oh no, I started the server on an XL World Cup, but I need to change the layout. <laughs> no, no. Okay, one second. Quit match. Multiplayer, trying it again. Create server is private. Good luck. Actually, I gotta change this. I gotta change that so you guys. <laughs> okay, Lone Star 2024. Sweet. Okay. Start server. <clears throat> nice. Oh, interesting. That's kind of a kind of a cool feature. Okay. So let's see. They look like it looks like it bounces pretty pretty okay. I'm like hitting the bunker. Uh, who uses Q and E to lean anymore, dude? Okay, let's take a look. Sorry, I know this is the boring part of the stream, but I'm just so curious. Oh, it doesn't stay. Is that what dirty bunkers means? That must be that must be what dirty bunkers means. Interesting. Can you wipe? <laughs> okay, let's take a look from this position. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah. You can definitely stop the snake attacker from here. <clears throat> so then that tells me that what the route is, is that what you really ought to do is uh, you, you're just going to be shooting. So off the break, you're probably... What I would do is I would... Ooh, and in fact, this actually changes a lot for me. So I think that the... Oh, hello. I actually think that the home is going to be shooting Dorito away a lot more than I realize. And that I think this guy is going to be shooting cross and then coming here and shooting this. Alternatively, if the, if this guy is not a threat, I do think you could come out, shoot this gap because it's so massive and then switch and then hold this. I think you could do that as well. 
Getting ready to play SPL this weekend. Nice, man. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. So, okay. Just wanted to confirm that. Uh, let's see. There was a couple other bounces we wanted to check really quick. Yeah, not enough. It's too close. It's on your side that it, that it bounces. It goes right here. <clears throat> and, you know, it's possible that... Well, let's see. I need to actually look with my eyes. Uh, I can't really tell. I don't think so. Pretty confident that's not doing that. <laughs> Those cakes? Are you serious? There's no way that's a... <laughs> that's not a normal sized cake. <laughs> okay, so... And then I guess there is probably opportunity for stuff in the middle. Um, I don't know. I'm not so sure. Yeah, it's like any any bounce I would want to take off of these pins is like I'm already needing to shoot at that guy. I wonder. I wonder if there's anything off of here that would hit the wedge. No. Oh wait, there's some paint right there actually. Do you see that? Maybe that maybe that's a bounce. We'll take a look at another angle here in a second. I mean, it's bouncing there, so it's bouncing right here. So maybe that maybe there's something there. Let's take a look at this one. No. No, I can't see it there. Oh, that's a bounce. That's for sure a bounce, dude. I don't care where this is going in the game. That is a bounce I would try for sure. If you're stuck making this this move from the Dorito one to the baby, I think you, I think you take that. I think that's a great bounce. Wow, interesting. Don't shoot the ref. <laughs> Put cones down. They'll make sure you win a uh, hit. Good for checking hits. Oh, gee. Oh, nice. Hold G to delete all objects. UI to rotate. I assume... Oh, where'd you go? Why are you getting stuck? Why are you getting stuck on me? So does it make a sound? Or is it just... Because I, I didn't leave dirty... I didn't leave dirty bunkers on. I guess I should find out if it makes a noise. Oh, it does. It does. Hmm. Well, it's saying it's too flat. <clears throat> it's saying it's too flat. So we'll see. Nope. This is no way. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't know, man. I th I think this is a bounce. I would try this. I really do think this is a bounce shot. I'd be surprised if it wasn't, I guess. I'll say that. Yeah, interesting. Um, let's try, let's put a snake shot up then really quick and then we will, we will finish it up. I know this is like, this is more fun for me than it is for you guys. So <laughs> this is a great, this is a great game. I'm excited for this. Um, so we said that this would stop the push. So let's try that. Is that fair? Oh, let's do this. That seems, that's pretty fair. I think it's a fair cone. Uh, there are other large targets as well. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh, next object. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Let's try. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you just like straight up see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice.
Nice. Okay. Anything else you guys want me to look at before we finish? I think this has been hopefully a productive stream for you guys. But I'm excited for this layout. It's going to be fun. Um, <clears throat> but I think, I think that's going to be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, Appreciate all the love and support you guys have given the channel. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I hate I hate to be that guy who's like, I have stuff coming because I do, but my new job kind of scuffed all that. So I do have stuff coming. I filmed actually all of the practices leading up to WCPPL and the actual WCPPL itself. So I am kind of working on like a coach's vlog. Um, I don't love vlogging, so I want to try to make it really more educational about strategy than, it, than just like here to watch us. But... That's mostly what I what I recorded. So we'll see how that turns out. But anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.